Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you a brilliant attacking game played by legendary Soviet chess grandmaster David Bronstein. His opponent is Hungarian chess grandmaster Ivan Farago and the game was played in 1990 in Tostrup, which is a town in Denmark. But before starting the game, a small reference from David Bronstein's book Secret Notes. Before the last round, there was a curious incident. Ole and I were drinking coffee when the telephone suddenly rang. It was the arbiter asking whether David was intending to play. What's the matter? His clock has already been going for half an hour. It turned out that our clock in the lounge was slow. While I was dressing, Ole ran to his neighbor and when I leaped out of the house, the carriage was already waiting. I rushed into the hall 10 minutes before the hour on my clock expired. We had prepared a serious opening against Farago, a grandmaster after all, but while we were in the car, I said, Ole, there is no time for a serious game. I will play e2 to e4. And to Bronstein's e4, Farago responded with French defense, e6, d4, d5, Knight c3, bishop b4, we have the winover variation, e5, advanced variation, and knight e7. After c5, knight e7 is the second most popular choice with which black wants to go for an immediate castling kingside. a3, bishop takes c3, check b takes c3, c5, queen g4, and black castled kingside. Well, unlike the lines where black is sacrificing his kingside pawns, this is a comparatively safer line, but even in this case black has to be very careful because white can launch a very dangerous attack. Bishop d3 and f5. Other popular alternative is knight c6, but in our game we have f5, after which Bronstein captured and passant. Rook takes f6. Bronstein writes, judging by the speed with which Farago had played the opening, I realized that it was time to deviate from the main line. If only I knew how to get to it. Most probably via bishop g5. Well, I have to tell you that this is a move which later Sergei Karyakin would choose when playing against Magnus Carlsen in 2012. After rook takes f6, Karyakin played bishop g5, to which Carlsen responded with rook f7, and then after queen h5, g6, White moved back his queen on d1. The game ended up in a draw. But in our game, after rook takes f6, we have queen h5, and to h6, Bronstein answered with a hyper-aggressive g4 move. Look at this, guys. I really like typical aggressive approaches. c4 by Farago, and g5, counter-taking black rook. g6, queen d1. Rook f7. Well, I have to tell you that capturing on g5 is not good. After bishop takes g5, this dark square, the bishop is demoralizing black's army. Threats are all over the board. So that's why after queen d1, we have rook f7. And as we have reached the critical position, please pause the video and try to find Bronstein's next move. Ready? Right now, as you can see, the light squared bishop is hanging, but instead of moving it away, Bronstein sacrificed it on g6. Knight takes g6, and there we have it. The queen returns back on h5 square. No way to kick away this guy. In his book, Bronstein writes, the effect of this maneuver exceeded all expectations. Farago thought for an hour and did not find anything better than to play his knight into the corner. Knight h8. Well, so far so good, but this knight h8 is a very passive move and is allowing white to gain advantage. Instead, it was better to play knight f4. If bishop takes f4, then rook takes f4. If knight h3, then rook f5. And yes, in this case, black is managing to defend successfully. In here, white can either give a perpetual check or can proceed with g6 and the position remains extremely complex and double-edged though i have to tell you that all in all the players have equal chances but instead in our game after queen h5 we have knight h8 and knight h3 white is developing his knight and also wants to switch into the attack the rook 
e5. Meanwhile, black is opening up the light squared bishops diagonal, but this is not good. At least black should have played rook f5, though even in this case, black has little chances of saving the game. Yeah, white's attack looks very scary. Let's go back, but in our game after knight h3, we have e5 and rook g1. Bishop takes h3. Black is removing a potential attacking piece. And in return, we have a discovered check. King f8, h7 with rook g8 threat. And yeah, it's, it's over, you know, it's over. How are you going to neutralize rook g8 threat? If, for example, king e7, then this time bishop g5 will follow. Or if rook g7, then white has many options. Even this simple bishop h6 is winning, though the engine says that queen f3 is stronger. But let's go back. So in our game after h7, we have queen c8 and rook g8 check. King e7 and black is losing his queen. Queen takes e5, bishop e6. In here, of course, Bronstein could first announce a check from g5, but he decided to munch the knight on h8 and Ivan Farago resigned. Well, now bishop g5 can be a threat. This h7 pawn is a potential queen and it's over, you know. There are no good moves to suggest black. The queen on the 8th rank is simply paralyzing black's position. The way Bronstein managed to outplay his young opponent is simply amazing. Let's not forget that at the time of this game Bronstein was 66 years old. In the end, a chess puzzle for you, where the task is to find mate in 3. It's white to move and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you. Feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video. Take care.